Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, please don't be shy. Eat. There's, I think there's more food still. There's a lot of chicken. Please take. Um, I was thinking just about the fact that uh, the Rebbe was coming to, uh, to visit us today. Um, a bit of a recycled idea for those who come to the shirim over here, but we'll, we'll say it for those who aren't used to it anyway. We saw this beautiful idea that we just came out of Parshas Vayeschanan. And we saw that Moshe Rabbeinu was not able to enter Eretz Yisrael. And no matter how hard he tried, no matter how hard he dove, and Hashem, Hashem said, you're not meant to be in Eretz Yisrael. You, you need to stay here. And so we saw that Kal Yisrael goes into Eretz Yisrael, but two and a half Shvatim stay over on what they call in English, apparently, the Transjordan. <laughs> and... Um, and they stayed there. And so there's a few reasons why they stayed there. One beautiful idea that we saw based on the Torah of Rav Tzvi, Ari Rosenfeld, is that there's an Indian that that, that wall of Eretz Yisrael was like the entranceway into Eretz Yisrael. And so just like every entranceway has a mezuzah, has something that keeps watch, that keeps guard over that entranceway and offers a shmirah into the house that it's going into, so too, that aspect of Eretz Yisrael, which is like the doorway into Eretz Yisrael, needs a mezuzah and it needs a shmirah. So we see that by the Shvatim, the names of the Shvatim in various places, the Shevet is called Ha, whatever the name is, and then Nayud at the end. Ha Gershuni. Right? So you see, one of the, one of the ideas over there is that, is that you have the, the He and the Yud, and it's, it's as if the Shem Hashem is contained within the whole Shevet. So each Shevet has the Shem Yud K and, and uh, like the, 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 the first Yud, the Yud, and then the last He. It's as if the whole Shem Hashem is included within the Shevet. So that Shem Hashem, which is Gematria 26, each Shevet has within them an aspect of the Shem of Hashem Yud K Vav K 26. And so those two and a half Shvatim that stayed on the other side, if you take two and a half times the gematria of 26, it comes out, where's Moshe? He's not here anymore. Yeah. It comes out to 65. 65. <laughs> anyway, 65 is exactly the gematria of mezuzah. They are the mezuzah. They wanted to make a shmira for Kali Yisrael. They didn't just want to stay on the other side. It's not nicer. They didn't have, you know, nicer hotels over there. They wanted, they wanted to, 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 to be the guardians of, of, of Eretz Yisrael. So they set themselves up as a mezuzah. Even more amazing is, is the Indian that if you look on a mezuzah, uh, an Ashkenaz mezuzah anyway, not as opposed to Sardi, I mean, uh, Ashkenaz mezuzah. So we have these, uh, these, these funny letters that are written on the other side of the mezuzah. And it's if you take the, 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 the name of a chem, what was that? The next letter. Right, the next, so you take the name, Yudke Vavke, and, you, and uh, the names that the, that's opposite, and, and you go the next letter. So it's like Vav. Chav Vav Zayn Vav. Chav Vav Zayn Vav. Base if only he was here every week, right? We'd, uh, we'd, we'd know all the details properly. Base member. <laughs> so you have all these the letters. Anyway, those, those things, those, those letters over there, they're, they're actually, they're on the other side of the mezuzah. They're like, the, they, they, they sort of signify the other side. Just like we have a Tzad Kedusha and a Tzad Tuma. So these two and a half Shvatim were the mezuzah of Kedusha. But before they came in, there was a mezuzah of Tuma on the other side. There was a force that wanted to guard the land of Israel and not allow Kal Yisrael to come in. And who was over there before? It was Sichon and Oig. And if you take the gematria of Sichon and Oig, it might be Sichon and Oig, I can't remember exactly. It comes out to the exact gematria of those letters on the reverse side of the mezuzah. The other side of the mezuzah. One reason why those two and a half Shvatim wanted to stay on that side was to be a Shemira. But the other sweetest, be- most beautiful reason why those two and a half Shvatim wanted to stay on the other side is because they're going to enter Israel, and they knew that their Rebbe had to stay behind. They knew that they were going to be separated from their Rebbe. And they couldn't take it. They said, not a chance. We're not leaving our Rebbe. Okay, we have to go and fight, no problem. But we're coming back to be over here with, with, with our Rebbe that we can't bear to be separated from. So I was thinking about this idea because anybody who knows Rabbi Vixenspanner, but I'm alive. <laughs> <laughs> was, he alive, was he alive when they decided Moshe, to stay? No, they, they stayed because he was buried there. Don't ruin oh, the boards. Come on, no. no. <laughs> no I, I want to live. <laughs> 
Point being, they couldn't bear to be separated from her. Anyone who has had a shaykhist to Rebbe Vixenspanner knows that once, once Rebbe Vixenspanner is your Rebbe, there's no turning back. There's no one else in the world. There's no one else you want. There's only one person that you can call when you have these certain types of questions. There's no one else to call. There's no one else in the world to call. And, and you know, this made me think about how everybody, everybody that's here is either a part of the current shul now over here, and which, which of course, Rabbi Vixen's banner was the founder of Kal Yireim, uh, de Toronto, when it was on Caribou, Caribou, right? Yeah. And it's, okay, now it's Kal Yireim de Thornhill, and, and it's a Hemshech. And, and, I was and, here for a year. It's true. And, uh, yeah, okay. And, um, or it's people who, who, who were very close to Ryan Bixen's banner and still continue to be close to Ryan Bixen's banner. And even though they don't come, come to the shul up here, they, when Rabbi Bixen's banner is here, we have to come. We have to see, we have to show covered, we have to be connected, we have to maintain that connection. We can't bear to be separated from our Rebbe. So, um, everybody for coming and uh, expressing our, uh, our, our love and our care and especially the covered that we, that we want to give to Rabbi Bixen's banner. And we're zoicha to hear uh, a live shear from my Bixen Spanner. We'll sing some more Nagunim, we'll hear Shi'urim. Please, everybody, eat, make yourselves comfortable. Mitzvah Shem. I'm going to interrupt you a lot, though. Just yeah, like, yeah, no you know. problem, no problem. It's all going to be recorded, by the way. Yeah. What? Recording? It's recording now, yeah. You're going to record also? Yeah. Okay. No, no, just ask me. Yeah, I have right here. I have right here. So first of all, I would like to welcome everyone and thank everyone, especially Rabbi Avron, for opening our shul to be able to host such a beautiful evening. And also, we very much appreciate everyone that made the effort to come from down south and from up north. Uh, it's very nice to reconnect once in a while. And um, as Avram said, there Avram said that uh, we're still very much connected. Uh, we still get uh, many shilas and so on and so forth. We have this group, which is a very... Uh, lively and vibrant group we have two groups one down south and one up north the one down south is a bit uh, more quiet but uh, Baruch Hashem and uh, we hear such nice things and especially uh, when when I was here the shul was uh, a third of the size and Baruch Hashem now we expanded and it's mamish mamish beautiful and I hear that uh, when we need to expand Be'ezus Hashem Bekarov so it's a, a big schos for me to be here tonight. Be'ezus Hashem, we're going to touch upon an akuda that we find in last week's parsha, in Parsha's Ve'eschanon, but it's a theme that's relevant throughout the year, and it's something that is also very much connected to the Indian of Pirkei Ovois. So we'll start off with the Torah tells us in Parshas Vaischanon, Loisoi Sifu al Adovera Sharnoichim Metzave Eschem. You shouldn't add, Moshe Rabbeinu is encouraging Klal Yisrael, Ba'ato Yisrael, Shema El Achukim El Amishpatim, Asharanoichim El Amid Eschem Lasois, Lamantichyu Uvosem Virishtem Esaoret. In other words, you're going into Eretz Yisrael. And yes, you're being promised Eretz Zavas Cholavidvosh. You're being promised a land where you'll be able to plant and you'll be able to, to reap the fruit of your labor. But the main purpose of going into Eretz Yisrael is 
to be mekayim the mitzvahs atluyas ba'oretz, as the Gemara says in Masech Tesoyte, Rashi brings it down that when they were crossing the Yarden, Yeshua stopped in the middle of the Yarden and he said, "You should all know that you're going in al Tanai, that you're going to keep the Torah, and if not, the Yarden will just come and drown all of you." So everyone understands that the purpose of going into Eretz Yisrael is to be able to be mekayim the mitzvahs, even Moshe Rabbeinu, who, as we, we learn in Parshas Ve'eschanon, Ve'eschanon 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 that he davened 515 tefillos, the Gemara says, V'chilechol Mepiriyo Yitzorich, is the reason why Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to go into Eretz Yisrael, is because he wanted to enjoy what Eretz Yisrael has to offer, about the not, he wanted to be mekayim the mitzvahs atluyos ba'oretz, so Moshe Rabbeinu is telling them, Shmala Chukim, you have to listen, you have to understand, because that is going to be the thing, Laman Tichu, Ivotz, and Verishtem That is was the, that's the deal breaker in order for you to be able to have the land and, and enjoy the land. But then he tells them, Loi Soi Sifu, do not add on the mitzvahs of the Torah, Loi Sigru, you shouldn't subtract. And then, Eneicham Aroyiz is Asher Osa Hashem Beval Poir. So, the Mepharshim explained, the Sephardim explains that what is the Indian of Lois Sifu and Beloi Sigru? That sometimes a person thinks, let's say for example, what does Lois Sigru mean? Avada Lois Sigru, what's the Havamina that a person says, I only want to be Makaim 612 mitzvahs? There's no such thing. Even, even the Ger that says, I'll be mekayim every mitzvah in the Torah besides one mitzvah. It's not. It's not valid. Um, the Olam may remember, but this is a story I always repeat. It's a Toronto story that uh, I knew someone that uh, was an Erlicha person kept all the mitzvahs in the Torah, but there's one mitzvah that they refuse to keep. It's not a mitzvah the Raisa b'zman but that's the mitzvah of eating mara on Pesach night. B'shum oifin sheba oilam, you couldn't convince them for anything to eat mar. Why? Because they went through the Holocaust, they had enough mar in their life, they're not eating mar. End of story, nothing to negotiate about. So, such a type of a thing is unacceptable. I understand, yes, we, we, we'll feel with them, we'll empathize, we'll sympathize, but there's a mitzvah, you have to do it, whether we understand it or not. So what does it mean, Lois Sigru? What's the Havamina that a person should be Megareya? So the Sephardim explains that Lois Sigru means that sometimes the Torah tells us a reason why you shouldn't do a certain thing. Let's say Shloim HaMelech, this is what he means a, a, a Moshul. The Torah says, Loyar Beloi Noshem, Loyar Beloi Susim. He says, Ani Arbe Veloi Oseh. In other words, I, I, I don't have to be Choshish that it's going to happen to me. And Lamaise, in the end, he was Nechshul. So that is a muscle of the Inyam Lois Sigru Mimenu. There's a famous pshat from the Vilna Goin. The Vilna Goin, it says on a Mishnah in a Gemara Masech the Shabbos, where the Mishnah says, Lo yikra lo oraner. A person shouldn't read on Friday night, you shouldn't read by candlelight. Why? The Mishnah doesn't say a reason. The Gemara says, Shem Ayata, that maybe you're going to come and move the lamp in order for the oil to, to be closer to the wick. So Rabbi Shmuel said, on the Ekre I, I Shabbos to be Mata, no way. And he says he doesn't have a problem. In the end, Karavahita, or according to one shit, Karavahikish Lahatois, and he said, Kama Gadoilim Divrecha Chomen, Shaomru La Iker Laraner. So the Vilna Goyen says, was his Kama Gadoilim, what was he in the spoil? Like, what did he think before? What did he think after? So he says, Azoi, if you look at the Mishnah, it doesn't say a reason. It says, Lo yikar lo Kum de Gemara again. The Gemara says, the reason is, Shem Ah, the reason is Shem Ayata. Ani ekre velo yata. But later he says, Kam gadoilim dirich hachomim, Shomru lo yikar lo Without any reasons, because if you don't know all the reasons, then maybe there's a reason that is Nageya to me. But the Nakuda is that sometimes a person may think that whatever the Torah is saying is not applicable to him. So that is the Indian of, of Lo Sigru. Now, says the Sephorna, what's the connection to Enechem Haroyes? It's Asha Osa Hashem Beval Poir. So he says, what happened by Baal Poir? By Baal Poir, what was the Kavona of the people that did Avera? Their Kavona was for Znus. They had no intention to do Avodah Zorah. 
But this was all part of Bilam's Eitzer, that it's Tavayochalahom Lismos, and from there they went to do the Indian of Avodah Zorah. Says the Sepharno that just like you see that by the Indian of, of, of the Benois Midian, they had no intention to do Avodah Zorah, but it, one thing led to the other and they were Nikshul in Avodah Zorah. So that is the, the Hemshech of why Lois Sigru Mimenu, because Enechem Haroyos. As I zog the, the Sepharno Pshah. But the Emma says, there's a very nice moshul that they, they say in the name of the Dubna Magid. The Dubna Magid explains the Indian of Loisosifu, Loisigru. He explains as follows. He brings, a, he has a story, Kedarka Vakoidish, with a moshul, with a story. So the story goes, there was a certain individual who lived in a town, and he wasn't so well off. You know, he was a simple person. He lived very simple. But he ayoyim, and his getting very important guests and he wanted to serve them properly, he wanted to be mechavah them but he didn't have the proper cutlery, the proper dishes so he had a neighbor that was very well off and he had cutlery with his on so he went to, the, he knocked on the neighbor's door and he says would you be able to lend me six spoons, six forks, six knives I need it for, for one night for supper and I'll bring it back tomorrow why not? If it's going to make you happy, Gesinta Hayt. So he lends him the, the cutlery. The next morning, the guy comes and knocks on the door, and he returns it. Then when he puts it away, he sees that instead of six spoons, there are seven spoons. So he goes right back to the neighbor, and he tells the neighbor, you know, you gave me back seven spoons. So the neighbor says, you didn't hear what happened last night? No, what happened? He says, there was a big mazel tov. One of the spoons had a baby. So, if it had a baby, it belongs to you. So, hence, seven spoons. Okay, Kane Yirbu, Mazel Tov, Kane Yirbu. Fine, a few weeks go by. Oh, it's the same story. He gets some important guest, he knocks on the door. Same thing, six spoons, six forks, six knives. The next morning, the guy gives back, he counts, and he sees seven forks. So he goes back and he says, what happened? He says, same thing, Mazel Tov. The fork had a baby. Then the next time with the knives. A few months go by and he knocks on the door and he wants the leichter. And this guy is already <laughs> making chashboinus. What's going to happen now with the baby? Anyway, the next morning he's waiting for the knock on the door and there's no knock. A week goes by, a month goes by and he figured by now, he has a right to go and ask him what's going on. So he goes, to, he, goes on the, he knocks on the door, and he says, a month ago, you borrowed the leichter. Where is it? He says, you didn't hear what happened? The leichter died. <laughs> he died. So he says, how can a leichter die? He says, if a spoon can have a baby and a fork can have a baby, <laughs> then a leichter can die. So says the Dubna Magid, L'chari, one would ask, what's wrong if you're Moisif, right? Being Moisif, you're being chafrum, you're making chumras, whatever it may be. Sifu. Why? V'loy sigru. From the hoisofos, sooner or later, or sooner rather than later, you'll start coming to be Megareya, and therefore stick to what the Torah tells us, and then you won't go wrong. Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, adds another Nakuda here, another Knaich, which is very, very interesting and very powerful. He wants to give a different connection to the Indian of Baal Pa'oyer and the Lois Asifu and Lois Sigru. What, and in order to understand what um, Reb Chaim says, we need to make a shtikla hakdoma. There's a very big question that the Mepharshim asks on this whole Indian of Lois Sifu, because the Torah is very clear, Lois Sifu, right? If you look in the Mishnahis and Ovis, the Mishnah says more than once, Basus Yogla Torah, Maestris, uh, not Maestris, Nedorim Siogla Prusius, La Prusius. So we see that there's a concept of Gedorim Siogim. If you look in Ovis the Reb Nosen, the end of the first parak and the whole second one is full of who made Siogim. Moshe Rabbeinu made Siogim, or the Mauritian made Siogim, many, many who made Siogim, 
And siyogim is something which is very much part and parcel of Shmir Satoriv Amitzas. We learn it out from a Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Shmartim es Mishmarti, and Rashi says in Masechtas Beya that Asum Mishmeres le Mishmarti, that you have to, you can't just live, as they say, by the book, because it's very dangerous, because you don't have any, any leeway. But if you make a siyog, so at least if you fall, you fall from the siyog. Some say pshat and parshas kiseit say, but see some maka legagecha. You have to make a maka. Why? Can you pull a noifel mimenu? In other words, if if you fall from the siyog, it's nish If you if you 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 mamish living on 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 the fringe, then you have no room for liwe. So making siyogim gedorim siyogim is very much part and parcel of the Torah. We have shvus l'shabbos. We have shnias l'arayas. All these things were put into place in order to build some boundaries, in order to build some fences. So the question is, is making a siyog a good thing? Or is it loy sifu? By other Mauritian, we have another Indian, where the Chazal say that the reason why he was nichshel in the very first mitzvah that, that he was given is because he added. He says about loy sigu, you shouldn't touch it, and that's where the Nochosh had a way of showing him, you see, you touched it, nothing happened, so if you eat it, nothing will happen. So the question is, is making Gedore Misyogim a good thing? Is it not a good thing? What's going on here? So, one of the very stark Yisoides that the Mepharshim say on the on the of the Rebnosen is that a person needs to know what is an Iker and what is a Tofel? What is the, the main thing? What is the add-on? Sometimes you see people take the add-on and make it even more important than, than, than the Iker. And that is where boundaries are crossed. Because if a person knows, this is my Iker Adin. This is the Rabbanon that they added on. This is a Chumrah and this is a Chumrah, al Gaba Chumrah. Then you know where you're holding, where you're standing. But as soon as the boundaries, the lines are crossed and they're blurry, you don't see exactly what's where and what's what, that is where the danger is. Says Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, what is the Yesoid of Baal Pa'or? So Baal Pa'or, the Gemara says in Masech the Sanhedrin, that the oifen of worshipping the Baal Pa'or is a person would relieve themselves in front of the Avodah Zorah. Now, this Indian is... A tremendous breach in Gidrei Yatznius. There's a whole simon in Shulchan Aruch in the beginning of, of Arachayim, Dine Beis Hakisei, which means there's halachas of how a person behaves in a Beis Hakisei. And if you've seen the Gemara, it used to be they weren't uh, like we have uh, bathrooms. People would go out in the field, they would go out at night, there's ways to do it. You have to cough, you have to, people should know you're there. So, what is the reason why there is this concept of Tznius? It's not Pshad that. You know, every person does it. It's not, it's, that's how we were created. The Gemara says that humans were created three things like Malochen and three things like Bahamas. And that's a fact of life. And there's nothing wrong with a person, you know, having his needs. So why is there the Indian of having Tzmius? Because there's something which, some things are private. Some things is not, is not for the public. And the whole concept of the Baal Pa'oyer is to breach and to break down those boundaries. And that's something that, unfortunately, is very rampant today in the world. You have people that do things, dafka, to go against what every normal human being, regardless whether he's a yid or a goy, everyone understands that certain things are just against normalcy and, 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 and against what, you know, what should be. You have people, there's a whole movement, people walking around naked. All these things are, you know, people are crazy. But what's the, what's the whole point of it? The whole point of it is to break down boundaries. So says Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, the Indian of Lois Sifu and the Indian of Lois Sigru is because you have to know what the boundaries are. There's Dine Atur. There are things that were added on, but we have to know what is an add-on and what is um, um, ju- just um, you know, part of the, of the Ike. So when a person is, is Moisif or Megareya, based on his own chashboinus, that is mamash the whole concept of Yenechem Haroyus is Asha Osa Beval Poer. 
that Baal Pa'oyer, Bilam, came up with the idea. What, what does Rashi say? What's the Hagdara of Bilam? So Rashi says, who porat gidroi shaloylam. The immorality that we have today in, our, in the world started off with Bilam. Bilam wanted to create a matzav that people, there are no boundaries. There's no privacy. There's no, you know, this is something that doesn't belong out in the public. And Baal Pa'oyer is punkt fakert. And that is, says Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, so harsh that the Loisifu Veloisigru, in a way where you don't know where the boundaries are, that is where a person can go wrong, and that is the connection to the Indian of Baal Poyer. So we have a shtikla mahalach of understanding what it is that the Torah wants. Avada, the Torah wants us to have Mishmeris le Mishmarati, the Torah wants us to have Gedore Misyogim, the Torah wants to, to, us to have Shavus le Shabbos Shniyas Laroyas. But that's only if a person knows what is the Deraisa, what is the Derabonon, what is the Chumrah on that. But if a person doesn't realize and doesn't understand, that is where a person can go totally wrong. Now, when we take a look at the, the Mishnah of Nedorim Siyog Leprishus, so there's a fascinating Rambam in Hilchas Nedorim. By the Indian of Nedorim, we find a very Shver Indian that if you look in the Gemara in Masechtas Nedorim, the Gemara brings a Pasuk in Kehelas. Toiv Shaloi Tidor, Misha Tidor Veloi Teshalem. In other words, if a person has two options, either to make a nether and not keep it, or not to make a nether, don't make a nether. Toiv Shaloi Tidor, don't make a nether. Who needs you to make a nether? And then you're going to be Nikshul and Tidor Veloi Teshalem. So the Gemara brings a Machloikis or a Meir of Yehuda whether it means that if someone knows that he is going to pay it, that maybe he should make a nether. So Remeir says, yeah. But if you're going to pay, then it's okay to make a nether. Rabbi Yudha says, no. Don't make a nether. The, the whole concept of nedorim is something that, that we don't have. I always say that for some reason in, in the Ashkenazi culture, the concept of nedorim and shvuas is, doesn't exist. In other words, people don't even know how to make a proper nether. I had a, a real shayla, a Yugaman called me, I mean, he, he suffers from OCD, quite obvious that he, he suffers from OCD, that he was learning Masech the Sendori Medaf Hayoimi, and all of a sudden, his mind started playing games with him, and he was saying things that his wife is also on him, just like we learn in the Gemara and in the Mishnah, and Himamash was going crazy, and, and, and he, he called me up, to, you know, what's the halacha? So I said that there's the concept of Nidre Oinsim, that, you know, if it's not something that you're doing Barots and it's, it's something that's possessing you, you don't have to worry. I told him I, I'm taking a Christ on myself. It, it, it was a whole parsha. But most people, you would ask them, how are you supposed to make a Nidre? We wouldn't know how to, how to make a Nidre because it's not something that, it's not in our lingo, it's not in our, in our, in our vocabulary. Shavuos, who, who makes Shavuos? There are some cultures that their shvuas is much more part and parcel. I have two stories that, that uh, showed this Indian. This is also a Toronto story. By the way, in London, I always tell Toronto stories because, uh, you know, it's, it, makes it, it makes it interesting. But this is a real Toronto story. It's a London story. Yeah. So many years ago, um, I, I was, um, you know, I write Chedusha Torah. So I had a computer, a laptop. And uh, I, I always used to use it in shul. And, you know, the shul was like my private office because the whole day there weren't too many people there. So I, I used to sit, you know, use the computer. And then by lunch, I would fold it up, put it on a chair, and then come back in the afternoon and continue. Vahi ayoyim, I come back in the afternoon. Vahayelad eineno. The computer is gone. Now, right away, I, I put one on one together and I, I knew who, whom I was choshed. So I went, it was two people, but I went to the father of one of them. And that guy called up his son. I heard it. He gave him such clawless that if he doesn't bring back the computer in 10 minutes, by 10 minutes, he gave him such clawless that the guy ran and he brought it back. So this is something that, you know, we, we don't have that. You know, if a person can, in 60 seconds, he can give you 100 clawless, just like, you know, so th th that's one story. Another story that happened, there's a practice that is done, it's part of, of, uh, of Hilchas Gitin, that uh, when a person is about to give a get, 
So the Bez then asks the Baal, the husband, have you ever made a shua or a nether that you're going to give a get or that you're not going to give a get? Why do they do that? Because if he made a nether or a nether or a shua that he's going to give a get, so he's not doing so out of his own free will. And Allah is it has to be Mertzayin Atoyv. If he made a nether or a shua that he's not going to give a get, so then he can't give a get because he's over the nether and the shua. So regardless, they're ma- they say, if by any chance you made such a thing, we're going to be mapped to the nether and the shua. It's all part of the nusach. And I've sat through hundreds of gitten, and I, I was always wondering why they do it. I mean, the answer is always no, no, I never did such a thing. Until part of um, what, what I did, I went to, to different Bate in, in the world. I went, so I went to Eretz Roll in Yerushalayim to take Shemesh to see how, how they do it. So I sit there and the, the, the Masad, Rabbi Masad, as the, the, the husband, it was in Hebrew, it was in Eretz Roll. Have you ever made a nether sure that he says, Ken, Nishbati Belo Kim, that his wife will never get a get. So they had to be matter. So I understood that there could be such a thing. But again, that's, as I said, in some cultures, but in, in the Ashkenazi culture, it, it doesn't exist, the whole Indian of nether and shua. But the question is that if we see from the Gemara that a, ne- a nether is so harsh, and the Gemara says, So why is it that the Torah gave it? Like, it, it's almost like you, you, you're giving a, an Ali of a koitzba. What's the point of giving the Torah? So the Heilige Rambam, he addresses this question. And the Rambam at the end of the Dorim says, the reason why the Torah gave us the Dorim is because sometimes a person may feel that he wants to do the right thing. He wants to be over the Hashem, but he just can't bring himself to do so. So a nether will sort of help push him over the edge because now he's bound to keep the nether. There's a story that happened. This is before Toronto. That um, it's a true story. There was a bocher that finished Masechta's Gitin. He worked very hard the whole year in yeshiva, and he finished the entire Masechta. And he felt such a geschmack because he felt that he knew the whole Masechta. He had it like sort of on the palms of his hand, and he made a kabbalah. I don't even know if he said a nether. He says he's, he wants to chazer Masechta's Gitin 101 times. Because he felt, you know, when, when you have the whole thing so, clo- you know, in, in, in like in, in a small little package, he felt, Munach Bakus said that, he felt that, you know, anyway, next month came and he was nowhere near finishing 101 times and he's learning a different Masech and now he's, he's bogged down by, so he went to ask a Shaila what he can do. And he couldn't get a heter because there there's a, is a problem of Nishba Ladvar Mitzvah where the aloha is that you can't be mater neder. Stamazoi, we would be able to find him a Pesach Haroto. But they felt that it's Nishbal, so they said you can do it over uh, you know, a period of time and so on. But again, we see that there is a concept that a person, why did he do it? Because he wanted to, you know, he should be able to hazard it. So that is the reason, says the Rambam, why the Torah gave us the parsha of Nador. And the Rambam is Meramas on a story that the Gemara brings down. There's a beautiful story in the Gemara in Adorim and Nazir. The, the, both, both Gemaras bring the exact same story. The Gemara says that Shimon Atzadik, who was a, a Kohen Godel in the period of the second base of Migdosh, he would never eat from a carbon that a Nazir brought when he became Tomei. The aloha is that a Nazir makes a, a nether of Nazirus for 30 days, Tam Nazir Islam and then when he's done, he brings Kharbonus and he, he goes back to, to normal life. What happens if on day 29, Yom is all of Mez be Pesa Pisoim and he becomes Tomei, not his fault. So the Torah says, He has to bring Kharbonus. So that carbon, Shimon Atzadik refused to eat. Why? Because a person can accept upon himself 30 days. But now this person is going to have to do 59 days. And he didn't sign up for that. So there was a shtikl inin of haroto, so there's a shail of chulen ba'azora, so he wouldn't eat it. Chutz from one young lad, the Gemara says, from his carbon he ate. What's the story? The story goes that there was a young man who looked very, very handsome. He had nice long locks, different uh, society than us. And today, someone with long locks, we don't look at him, right? But uh, in the times of the Gemara, he had beautiful locks of hair. 
and he came to the Beis Hamikdash to have it cut because a Nazir has to cut his hair. So Shimon Atzadik asked him, Mara Isa, that that you're going to be mashchis such beautiful hair. So he told him a story. He says, I'm a shepherd for my father's sheep. And one day I came to the well to draw water for the sheep. And I saw my reflection in the water. And I saw that I'm handsome. And his Yetzirah was there right by his side. And his Yetzirah told him, you know what kind of awareness you can do with your beauty. So right then and there, he said, I'm going to cut my hair for, to become a Nazir. And then he's compelled to, to cut his hair. So Shimon Atzadik says, Yisrael, he kissed him on his, on his forehead, and he said, So we see, this is what the Rambam brings that story, very bekitzer, but this is what the Rambam says, that yes, Nedorim can be dangerous, and Nedorim is something that we stay away from, but the purpose is for a siyog, because sometimes a person needs that bit, bit of extra to, to help to push him to be able to do the right thing. So just to summarize is that Be'etzem, we're talking here about G'dor and Misyogim. We're talking here about how a person should conduct themselves and what a person should do or not do. So the first thing that a person needs to do is you have to learn Torah in order to know exactly what's what. What's Mena Torah, what's the Rabbonon. Because then a person can start making Cheshboinus. Sometimes you can hear from people the way they ask questions that they're so confused that, that, that they, they put an emphasis more on the TOEFL more than the Iker and, and, and you know it, it's very dangerous so when a person knows what's the Iker and then you can add on the TOEFL and then that's how you have a proper Shmir Satori of Amitsus. but if it's Tam Susifu or Sigru because you know once you start crossing lines and you don't know what your boundaries are that is when it starts becoming dangerous, and that's when it becomes a slippery slope. So may the Rebbein Shalom help us that we should all be able to understand and to learn the Torah and to love the Torah, and especially Baruch Hashem under the leadership of Rebbe Avram, who puts in such simchas achayim and simchas Torah, we should all be able to, to learn the Torah and to keep it properly and be mechanach our children in that way, and in that zechus will be zoicha to all the brachas of the Torah. Amen. 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 Amen.